Okay, welcome back. I did promise that we are going to uh, uh, talk security when we return. Um, Nasara State Government uh, yesterday confirmed the killing of 40 headsmen in Doma local government area of the state following unidentified drone attack. Governor Abdullahi Sule gave the figure while briefing journalists shortly after a meeting with the national leadership of the Fulani social cultural group Meeti Allah Kautel Hore Association. I hope I got that right. The security agencies and other critical stakeholders were also there at the government house, Lafia. Governor Sule, who spoke, described uh, the incident as unfortunate and announced that the meeting will, uh, with the leadership of the cattle headers and the security agents was one of the measures to ensure that justice is done to achieve peace. He also announced that he is talking to high command of the military authorities in Abuja for a meeting with the leadership of the Fulani social cultural group Meeti Allah in attendance to find a lasting peace to the incidents and to avoid future occurrences. Uh, well, um, Bayo, I think, okay, it's just to say it's high time because I can't remember when a high level security meeting like this was convened because of this. Uh, farmer header clashes or any other clashes like this. So from the local security meeting, he's escalating it to the security chiefs in Abuja and they will meet with the Mieti Allah. I hope that it's not only the Mieti Allah that they will meet with because um, uh, whether it is the farmers who did it or not, but the problems have always been between farmers, headers. So now that the opportunity has come for a meeting, a high caliber meeting of that nature, I think all people should be there at that table when they are taking those decisions and uh, to make sure that if we're finding a lasting solution, we're not finding the solution for Mieti Allah alone or for the farmers alone or for the community heads alone or anybody. Everybody has to be there. I don't know how you took this news of this security challenge in Nasarawa State. Well, I, I, I read, the, I read the, the news and incidentally, um, I'm not going to speculate, uh, but from what the governor was saying, um, it, it, the, the story is that the bomb was dropped. Um, because they also need to, you see, again, we go back to public communication. Um, I don't think there was a press release, but the governor had a press conference and explained that he had been working overnight since when that incident happened all through the night with all the stakeholders. And one has to commend the governor for that proactive step to make sure that uh, people didn't take laws into their hands People didn't circulate wrong information, which could trigger reprisals or revenge attacks. So we really, really have to commend the governor for that. Now, I think there's not much information, to be quite honest, because this is a very sensitive matter. There's not much information to begin to carry out an analysis, and I will tell you why. Was, was it a bomb that had been buried in the ground? And then this had us accidentally, like, for example, like an anti-personnel mine or an unexploded ordinance, which had been underground. And then suddenly the, somebody stepped on it or it was activated somehow. And then it, it killed this, this, this herders and their cows. Oh, the governor so, said, uh, Bayo, the governor said that um, uh, it's a drone that came okay. and did that. So an right. unknown drone, okay. and it gives us concern that the Nigerian okay. airspace, a drone can enter and then kill people. And no, 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 no. Let's, let's, let's wait. Let's wait. Yeah. The governor said a drone, and it was a drone. It was a drone was. that was responsible. Fine. So, so no drone entered Nigeria. Let's just get things clear. If there was a drone that did it. The drone probably uh, originated from within our territory. Mm. Because if it was coming from outside, there are resources to track and to know even if there's a rogue drone that comes in and evades radar, they will, I mean, at some point they will know. Nasarawa State is in the middle of the country. It's not like the edge of the country where somebody can just come in on the border, do something and immediately get out, you know. So, so I, I mean, I assume uh, that, that, that that to be so. And when he said he's held meetings with the chief of defense staff and everybody, then, but I'm still saying that because this is a very sensitive matter. That's why I say we need to be very careful. 
because if, 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 if it was a drone, it meant the drone was armed. So while there are all kinds of drones in the country, even photographers have drones, TV production companies have drones, but these are not armed. So a drone that is armed, such drones are very few. And in fact, very few countries operate armed drones. And the only operator of an armed drone in Nigeria is the Nigerian Air Force. Okay, so, but he has not said anything. He has not mentioned the Air Force. So I think they need to investigate and they need to tell us exactly what has happened. And on the basis of that, we can begin to analyze. Because there are a number of things we can begin to talk about now. But I think we will preempt whatever they are saying. And because it's a sensitive matter, it's also very careful, you know, uh, in my view, it's very careful for us not to go into that. I think what is clear is that the governor has engaged with Meyeti Allah. Yeah. He has engaged with the community where the incident happened. He has engaged with the military, who are likely to be the only operators of armed drones in the country. But now they have not told us the outcome of all of this. So... We need to know. And my, my position would be that we commend the governor for the proactive steps he has taken. There has been no revenge attacks, no reprisal attacks. And I think that's credit to the governor because he's been able to prevent that. Now they have to come up and tell us exactly what happened. Because if nobody is revenging or doing anything at the moment, it is because they are respecting the office of the governor and they are now waiting to be told exactly what happened and whether there will be compensation if there's culpability and the circumstances and all that. So I think we should wait. But it is very sad and very worrisome that we could lose so many people in this incident. You know, it's very sad, it's really worrisome. And um, the authorities really need to move very fast to let us know exactly the circumstances and what exactly happened and then the, re the remedial steps and mitigating steps that will be taken to ensure that this doesn't go out of control and the families that have been affected, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, they engage them and determine together with them how to proceed on the losses that they have suffered. Break for the news. Uh, by, by way of inf information, President Mohamed Buhari on Thursday commenced a two-day official visit to his home state of Katsina, where he inaugurated some projects executed by the state government. However, his first day in the state was marked by protests by youths decrying the hardship in the country. The youth staged the protest a few minutes after noon, shortly after the president inaugurated the Kofa Kaura underpass in Katsina. The protesters caused a commotion at the Kofa Kaura underpass, where the two stones at the crowd after Buhari left the area. The boys also set up bonfires along uh, the Yahaya Madaki Way, a few meters from the underpass, while shouting, we don't need you, we no go do, uh, in Hausa. A viral video showed a mass of youths violently denouncing the government as they engaged some policemen on the road. The development is coming 72 hours after the presidential standard bearer of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, was stoned by suspected hoodlums at a campaign rally in Katsina. And my take out from these, uh, we're not discussing this in depth, in depth right now, is that uh, Buhari is from Katsina State, and he's a northerner, he's Hausa or Fulani, okay, but he's a northerner. And then Peter Obi is from Igbo. So we, if there is good governance, it is not because of where the person comes from. If there is hunger, it's not because of where the person comes from. It's, so there's no, no question of, it's my own person, so I have to vote for him. He's my own religion, he's my own ethnic group, he's my own this or that. Hunger knows no ethnicity. Suffering knows no color. It knows no family uh, lineage or anything. It's just that. So. In the forthcoming election, as we always call on people of Nigeria on this program, vote your conscience, not because of where the person comes from or what he worships or anything, but see if the person is competent enough to move Nigeria from where we are to somewhere better. We'll take a break now for the news. When we return, we'll conclude with other issues that we need to, con uh, to discuss. Stay with us. <music>